line shovels. Captain line shovels. These are drills that, again, we're moving now and catching the ball when our eyes move. We'll take three guys minimum. All they're doing is walk. You'll hear them walk up to the ball. They're following the ball. That's all they're walking. Oh, good. You've got to have at least three guys to do that. No more than five. Three to five guys. It's just an inline shuffle. The more you can get them to move, throw, and catch, the better. The more you can get them to move. Normally, because we're indoors and we're doing it this way, I'll roll it. But normally, I will not give them ground balls unless it's a fungo. If you're giving your guys ground balls on the field, Try to find a first baseman or a net, something you can put at first, so that after they feel the ground ball, they can complete it and make a throw. You want them to try and make as many throws as they can off the ground balls. Hitting them 50 ground balls is going to make them good ground ball picker up. Kind of like the wet picker up. But it doesn't teach them anything about gaining ground and making an accurate throw. So try to complement the fielding with the throw. B cuts. I try to stay away from bad hands as much as I can. We'll go into that in a minute. Why? Again, remember, we're aggressive, aggressive, attack, 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 so I'm going to come get the ball. So if there's a ball hit to his six or his right side, I don't mind going to that hole and feel it deep and try to make a longer throw. That's not going to happen very often. That's not realistic. You can't expect him to do that. So I want him to attack the ball, stop. We want him to come this angle. He's going to feel it off. It's different. He's going to feel that off his right foot. Now, after he's feeling that, he's going to come up. He's going to Gain ground, and now that's what we call the beat cut. You come to a point, beats the ball, and now I work towards first. So it's, you draw up with a piece of paper and pencil, it'll look like a beat. That's what we call a beat cut. Pretty trust. Uh, so he's going to cover the ball, catch, and he's going to work with the target line. He's going to make the throw. Ball. Backhand now. Our backhand is very simple. How many? How many guys had it for 30 years? You gotta go to the hole, you think, oh my gosh, he's gonna make this play. Ball's just about to you pull it up. Ball says, I am right here. Oh my gosh. It's an easy play to make. We didn't make it. So they come into the dugout. And they'll tell them, John, remember, you go get that back and you gotta stay down, back's gotta be here, gloves gotta be here, you gotta get out front. Way too much information, way too much. So all I want them to do is get to the ball. They're going to do it off their left foot. And the only thing I tell them is on a backhand, get your nose as far behind and as low down to the glove as you can. Nose behind and down behind the glove. That's all I got to tell them. If they do that, everything else stays down in play. Nose behind the glove, hold it when you feel it. He's on his left foot, his nose is behind the glove, and that's all it is. pick it up and make the throw to keep the double play in order. So when we get a ball in the hole, I tell them all I want to do is overstep. Anybody use the term overstep? I am over it. Man. We use a term called overstep. This is generally what we're going to do this is the ball's hitting the hole. We're not going to be able to turn a double play, but we need to keep a double play in order. So we've got to get the lead runner. So he's going to overstep the ball, field it on the inside of his left foot, He's going to take, you can open up on the toe, you can open up on the heel, doesn't matter. But you've got to open up so you're in this position to make an accurate dart throw. Second, so we keep the double play in order. You go to your pitcher and go, hey, now I'm just trying to make one good pitch and get double play right out of the end. Keep the double play in order. He's just going to overstep, boom, right here. And again, notice where he fields. He fields here and throws from here. He didn't field here and step up. He fields it here, through from here. Overstep, stay low, make the throw, double play still in order. Overstep in the six hole. Just a few mark right here for the ball, one ball. See something in there? Are these all in there? Alright, this is what we call a clock drill. They'll come in and let's do this real quick. It's just like the face of a clock, they're going to start at 12 o'clock. Short hop, he's going to go to 1 o'clock. He's going to work the bad hand. He's going to go to 2 o'clock. He's going to go to 3, and he'll turn and go all the way back and it's to 6 o'clock. So he's going to go to 11 o'clock, work his way back to 6 o'clock on forehand pickup. 
I wish I could take credit for this drill. It looks like a simple drill. When uh, Phil Garner was the coach for the Tigers, his infield guy uh, was Doug, and I can never remember Doug's last name, but gave me that drill. I'm just saying it looks simple, but it's great. It's just a nice, easy drill they can do and have a little fun with. Just a clock drill. Double play work. Step over here a little bit closer. 